Get ready, because today we're going to talk about how to take a simple idea and expand it into a full-length story. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. One of the most frequent questions I get from my subscribers is how do you take a simple idea and expand it into a novel, a screenplay, a TV series, whatever. And we're going to focus on this today. I've got six tips that'll help you boost an idea into something larger. But first, I want to answer the question, how do you know that a story idea is good? And the answer to this question is that if an idea excites you and gets you fired up to write, that's how you know the idea is good. It can be any type of idea. It could be a character that engages you. It could be a, a strange situation, or it could be a mysterious setting, or it could be a, a brutal conflict between two sides. There's tons of different possibilities, and it can even be something as simple as a single image. Maybe a green sky, or yellow wallpaper, or a shattered TV screen. All these things Things can potentially lead to a larger story and it's important to keep in mind that the most simple ideas can be built into something great and complex. All right, now let's get into those tips I have for you today. I've got six of them. And the first one is to combine ideas. And usually the way that you come up with a unique idea is you take the one idea that inspires you and you combine it with another idea, another unrelated idea. And the second idea, it could be the total opposite of your first idea, or it could be something that's just out in left field. It could be something that's just off the beaten path. Whatever it is, you'll combine two ideas. And if you do this correctly, if you combine two unrelated ideas, this should light a fire in your mind. It should get your creative juices flowing. For example, think about the movie Titanic. I'm sure many of you know that the movie was pitched as Romeo and Juliet aboard the Titanic. That was the elevator pitch. And it sums up the two main ideas that were combined to make it work. You have the idea of forbidden romance, and then you combine it with this tragic voyage, this historical disaster, and it ends up building a large scale story. Tip number two is to connect your idea to other story elements. And earlier this year, I did a video on the 10 core story elements. I'll link it up here as well as in the description below. But basically what I talked about are things like character, plot, theme, world building, all the important pieces that appear in every story. And these pieces are critical to think of when you have your idea in mind. How does that idea relate to your characters? How does it push your plot forward? How does it connect to your theme? For example, let's look at Jurassic Park. Here you have a unique story concept. It's about an amusement park full of dinosaurs. And that sounds fun, but the concept alone isn't enough. You need characters, so let's get an ambitious businessman to build this park, and then we'll add in some park employees and some visitors. But what kind of visitors? Well, since the ambitious businessman wants to make this park a huge success story, he should probably invite some dinosaur experts to give him feedback. And maybe when they get there, they tell him things he doesn't want to hear. And then boom, there's your conflict. And that brings us to our third tip, create goals and conflict. And your story idea should create a situation where characters want something. It could be something like success or money or love. Whatever their goal is, connect it to your story idea and then create obstacles that prevent your characters from getting what they want. If your character wants to solve a murder, make sure there's evidence missing. If your character wants to launder money to pay off a debt, have the authorities or have criminals interfere. If your character wants to find love, create circumstances that prevent the couple from getting together. Remember that anytime you create obstacles, you're creating scenarios where characters have to struggle in order to overcome their problems. And these struggles will fill out your story. Tip number four, include meaningful subplots. Keyword, meaningful. And not every story will have a subplot or a supporting plot. Sometimes if you're writing like a short story, if it's a thousand words, two thousand words, whatever it is, you're probably only going to have the main plot that just goes straight through. But if you're writing a larger story, like a novel, a screenplay, a TV series, whatever it is, if you're writing those larger scale stories, then you're going to include subplots. You might include one or you might include multiple, but you'll include things like a romantic subplot or maybe it involves a mentor or a betrayal or there's a lot of different possibilities with subplots. But the key thing to remember is you need to choose an appropriate subplot for your story. Now, how do you choose one? Well, typically it's going to connect to your story's central theme. I'm planning to do an in-depth video on theme in the near future, but for now we'll keep things simple and say that theme is the truth, lesson, or message at the heart of your story. So if we look at the movie Rocky, the central theme is about gaining self-respect. 
Rocky himself earns self-respect by competing against the heavyweight champ, and that's your main plot. But it's not enough to carry the story on its own. And that's where your subplot comes in. The movie's subplot is a romantic one involving him and Adrian. Here we have two losers who undervalue themselves, and then over the course of the story they learn to support each other and stand up for themselves. And this feeds into the main plot as well as the story's central theme. Tip number five is active and passive research. And research is a great way to gather information that you can use to flesh out your stories. And I'd say there are two types of research, and the first one is active research. And this is when you know the subject matter of your story and you deliberately learn more about it. You go out and you seek more information. For instance, maybe you wanted to write a book about mountain climbing. And what you did, you would go out and you'd get books and documentaries on the subject. You might even interview someone with mountain climbing experience, and that would help you flesh out your story. You'd be deliberately seeking out that information. Then there's also passive research. And this is when you let life come to you. You just go through your life and you let inspiration hit you. Maybe you're at the grocery store and you see someone acting in a strange way and that inspires one of your characters. Or you overhear a conversation or you have an experience or maybe you even just watch a movie that for enjoyment and that movie just inspires part of your plot or whatever it is. If you have a core idea in place, sometimes the world around you will fill in the blanks and help you write your story. And then tip number six is that if you're struggling to develop your story idea, push it aside and come back to it later. And there's no shame in doing this because sometimes right now is not the right time. And if you do have a good idea, it'll stick in your head and it'll bounce around there until the time is right. And this is actually what happened to me with my book Entry Wounds. And if you're not familiar with it, it's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down until he kills six people with it. Now, when I first wrote the book back in 2018, I had this rough idea of a guy who had a gun stuck to his hand and there was a lot of shootouts going on, but there was no real substance to the plot. It was just crazy craziness and nothing important happened. And so I shelved it and I came back to it a year later in the summer of 2019. And this was after I was thinking about the, the TV series Dexter. I'm a big fan of Dexter. I think I was rewatching some episodes at that point. And I got the idea, why don't I take that, that idea of Dexter, that serial killer who only kills bad guys, and why don't I apply it to the haunted gun? So what I did was I had a regular guy, he's just like a school teacher, he picks up this haunted gun and then he has to kill six people with it. And he has to rationalize how he's going to go about doing it. And that's where the story really came alive for me. And I ended up writing it and having a great time. So keep that in mind. If you have a story idea that you're really in love with, you really believe in, but you're not quite ready for, you can always just push it aside. Keep it in mind until the time is right. So I hope this helps. Question of the day. What is the longest story you've written, either in terms of page count or word count? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. I already talked about the premise in today's video, but if you are into darker Dexter-like stories, definitely give it a shot. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, remember to keep on writing.